following World War II, organized crime in the United States grew to such proportions that its scope was greater than the law enforcement agencies that tried to fight it. But finally, in the nation's capital, the Senate Investigating Committee presented a new threat to gangland, and panic began to grip the overlords of crime. They sought a new central headquarters for their operations, a city where they felt they could be safe. They chose the Miami area, a vacation wonderland, a mecca for tourists who swelled the normal population of 600,000 to more than two million in the winter season. A city where the tough, honest police force was inadequate in size to protect the tremendous overflow of people. Then, out of sheer necessity, a way was found to crush crime in Miami. As Senator George Smathers of the state of Florida relates. The organized crime flourished in the Miami area at one time, I am proud to say that no vestige of it remains. This picture ably shows what a few courageous citizens, honest politicians, and tough, alert police agencies can do to rid their cities of gangland's influence. The instrument and the method may be different in each instance, but the end result can always be the same. This story of the world's most powerful crime operation begins at the Miami International Airport at one of the landing platforms for the Cuban-American airline. Flight 9 arriving from Havana, Cuba. Flight 9 arriving from Havana, Cuba. Passengers will use gate 15. Vuela Nueva Llega de la Havana, Cuba. Vuela Nueva Llega de la Havana, Cuba. Los pasajeros saldrán por la entrada 15. Vuela 9, llega de la Habana, Cuba. which lies between Miami City and Miami Beach in Biscayne Bay, a regular monthly business meeting had taken place the afternoon of the murders on the million dollar estate of a man named Tony Brill. Father sells vacuum cleaners. Mother works as secretary to brewery. The kid's name is... I know her name. Send her to Detroit. She can work as a shell for Marshall. All right. Teddy's seeing her too much. His mind must be on business. You worry about him like a father. Why? A man needs somebody to fill his shoes. I wouldn't know. I only have a maternal instinct for mink and sable. 
What didn't we cover this afternoon? Johnny Locus report on the San Francisco area. The book receipts are 20% off from last month. Maybe the pool in San Francisco is a little too deep for Johnny. And we didn't cover Moore's tab on slot machines in Vegas, but I hear it's all right, though. The overall picture's pretty good. How about you? Model agencies up 3%. Escort bureaus have slacked off a bit, but I'll get after them. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin. Honey, I want to hear the news. You can read it in the paper. One of the most brazen murders in the history of crime took place tonight at the Miami International Airport, where two Cuban passengers aboard a Cuban-American Airlines transport were shot to death as they alighted from the plane. All indications point to a typical gangland killing. Police are starting an immediate investigation, though so far there are no witnesses. A statement is expected from Police Chief Bellman shortly. We will report any new developments as they occur. Back to Ronnie Sharp and his music. Thank you, Robert. Right, Tom. If there were trouble, we would have heard about it on the radio. There'd be no trouble. He has medals from the Army for his marksmanship. Did he ever show them to him? He saves those for the younger girls. Hiya, Ted. See, there was no trouble. I'm here, Johnny. Fine, Ted. Come on in. Ted. Good boy. Bravo. Thanks, Tony. Everybody's having a good time. Meeting over already? Oh, just a couple of odds and ends to clean up. I don't think a van will give us any more trouble. Hold on to your job at the airport for a couple of weeks. Till the heat's off, then quit. Oh, yes, Teddy, about this girl. I've been seeing too much of her, and I don't have that kind of time. Get rid of her. I like that boy. All that day, at Miami Police Headquarters, and into the night, Police Chief Bellman, capable head of the Miami Force, conducted his investigation into the murder of the two Cubans at the airport. Come in, Max. Heard one of them fired at the airport a screen before he's hired. We double-checked. Nothing. Hi, Max. Well, what about the rest of the passenger list? All clean. No records. Well, stay with it, Simmons. Right, Chief. You got something, Max? The answer from Cuba. The two guys are Emilio Canita and Pedro Gomez. Muscle boys for the Cuban Gambling Syndicate. Yeah? Oh. They handle the bleeder lottery in Havana. Muscle job? Maybe they're trying to organize a bleeder racket in Miami without asking Tony Brill's permission. So you think this is Brill's town, too? Chief, even that Senate committee couldn't hang anything on him. Two million people soaking up the sun. Losing their money gambling at night, and everybody's happy. Stores are making money, the hotels are jammed. Isn't there anybody besides me who cares if this is Brill's town? I'll stay with you, Chief. Yeah. As a result of the editorial by Charles Earnshaw, a plan began to materialize. For not all of Miami's citizens were indifferent to the hold the crime had on their beautiful city. In the study of the Earnshaw home, the first meeting of the Committee of Five was held. Each man had been chosen because of his outstanding civic leadership. Present besides Earnshaw were Juan Estanza, Cuban importer and exporter. Dennis Teller, owner of one of Miami's large department stores. Frank Alton, one of the directors of the Bar Association. And Clifton Staley of the Hotel Association. Mr. Earnshaw, in theory, your plan is good, commendable. But how should I say it? We are babies in the woods. What do we know of dealing with criminals? Well, what we don't know, we can learn. That's theory, too. It's taken Tony Brill and his mob years to establish their business. It would take us just as long to stop them. You say Brill has tremendous influence. I think we have friends too, Mr. Renshaw. We can fight influence with influence. Well, gentlemen, this isn't a country club arrangement. If our identities become known, it could mean our lives, or the lives of our families. Whatever we do, we must use great discretion, the utmost secrecy. I'm a lawyer, Mr. Renshaw. 
I believe only in facts. And the fact is, we have no direct weapon with which to fight Brill. Brill's weapons will be brass knuckles and guns. How do we fight those? Since you brought up the plan for this committee, Mr. Earnshaw, I've given it considerable thought. Violence is Brill's weapon. And we're not violent men. But if it takes violence to fight violence, then I think I know where to secure such a weapon. We'll listen to any suggestion. Well, 12 years ago, I saved a Chicago gangster named Mick Flagg from the electric chair. Flagg was one of the toughest mobsters in Illinois, a hard man. When he was arrested on a murder charge, the court was inclined to throw the book at him. But to me, certain elements in the case didn't make sense. I decided to defend Flagg because I thought he was innocent, and he was. I won an acquittal for him, but it was a close enough call that he realized his position. And he was smart enough then to give up the rackets. After the trial, Mick Flagg disappeared. I'm not sure that he's still alive. But if he is and he can be found, we'll have our weapon. But to bring an ex-gangster into our confidence and the use it... The police wouldn't do such a thing, Mr. Teller. But we're not the police. That's one advantage we have in trying to stop Tony Brill. Mr. Alton's right. This man Flagg can teach us what we must know. How do we find him? A newspaper can do many things, Mr. Earnshaw. If it's possible at all, you can see that we find this man, or that he finds us. Registered at a small beach hotel was the girl who had been on the plane with the murdered Cubans. Her name was Holly Abbott, and the working of the committee was to drastically alter her life. But at the moment, all she was aware of was that she lived in sheer terror fearing the same fate as that of the two Cubans. Others whose lives were to feel the effect of the Committee of Five was an Indiana farmer who called himself Mike Pierce and his son, Gil. beans off the West Acre. They'll go good together. That was a heck of a shot. You're really the greatest, Pop. Uh-uh. What do you need now, Gil, huh? Advance on your allowance? Hey! Hey, you two guys, cut it out. Come on, stop. Take it easy. Stop it. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Gil, I thought Joey was your best friend. Yeah! A suck him in the nose, that's whoa, what! Whoa, whoa, take it easy, both of you. Now, what's this all about? Get him out of here! Get him out of here! All right, Joey, maybe you better go till I get this straightened out. You ain't gonna get nothing straightened out, Mick Flagg. You heard that, Pop? He says your name is Mick Flagg. It's in the paper. Pop, I call Joey a liar. He is, isn't he? The paper's a liar, too. Our name's Pierce. Everybody knows that. Gil, listen. That is your picture in the paper. Ain't it? Yes, sir. Gil. Joey will tell all the other kids, even if they don't see it in the paper. I'm going into town. You stay in the house, son. I wouldn't leave the house now for anything.
Why did you run it, Harry? We buy that Sunday supplement from New York, just the way it is. We don't even print it here. You know what it's done to us, to me and Gil? I think I know. Why? Why do they do it? What's the idea? I'm a farmer now. They can't hang me for that. I can't tell you why, Mike. But it must be very important. They wouldn't even turn it over to the police for a routine check. I got an off-the-record note. Every editor in the country got it. It was signed by Charles Earnshaw, publisher of the Miami Daily Express. Miami? Know a man named Frank Alton? Alton? Lawyer? Yeah. Years ago. The letter from Earnshaw authorized the editors to give you transportation and expenses to go and see Alton in Miami. From the trouble they went to to find you, this must be something big. Mm. It's not gonna do Gil any good. Take him with you, so he doesn't have to face other kids here. Sure. Only I have to face him. You'll go? I don't know, Harry. But if I do, I'll take Gil with me. The next morning, Mick Flagg and his son, Gil, were on their way to Florida. The boy was left with friends who owned a citrus grove near Orlando, and Flagg continued on to Miami alone. $50,000. $50,000. It's a lot of money, Mr. Flagg, but we don't want you to turn us down. You guys keep your identity secret, but I don't, isn't it? I'm supposed to be the lone patsy in this setup. No. Never get a chance to spend a dime of that 50,000. The money will be placed on deposit in your son's name. But we're not paying you to die. Maybe Brill won't know that. Now, this deal still boils down to who gets killed first. Tony Brill or me. That's the way you look at it? We don't want you. Look, Brill's not that inaccessible. Any police officer could shoot him down. We want him alive in court where we can prove to him and the rest of his kind that the law is stronger than they are. Grab him on a tax charge, anything. You know better. Real smarter than Capone was. He doesn't leave any loose ends. And as fast as our chief of police, Bellman, shuts down one of Brill's places, he opens up somewhere else. Bellman says the only way we can close up the entire RNL syndicate is to get the top man, Tony Brill. That's what he's waiting for. I'm not going to make a speech, but you've been around. Look, Mick. You know as well as I do what the mobs are doing today. How they're corrupting school kids, making them shills for all kinds of rackets, involving them in ways that couldn't be printed in a newspaper. You've got a lot of arguments. I've got one more. Twelve years ago, you were tried on a murder charge because Tony Brill framed you. When did you find that out? A lot has come out since Brill and his mob moved into Miami. Look, you can kick or gouge or hit below the belt, anything. Nobody will interfere. Bellman will back you up all the way. Who's Brill's checkman? Checkman. When gambling syndicates take checks at their tables, they never endorse them, and they cash them in out-of-state banks. Banks do business with these gamblers? Yeah, the bank doesn't know it, but usually one of their cashiers is on the syndicate's payroll. Checkmen may carry as much as a quarter million dollars in checks. Very interesting. You giving us a lesson or an answer? You know what Brill did to me. You know what that newspaper story did to my boy. Is there any other answer? If you can arrange for a talk with your police chief, I'll find out who Brill's checkman is myself. Thank you, Mr. Flagg. I'll take care of everything. You'll have all the cash you need to work with, and Mr. Staley will arrange for your hotel suite. OK. Mick. Thanks. You saved my life once. Maybe it's a good thing you saved it for something like this. I only hope I live long enough to see how it all turns out. And none of the hoods who ever worked for Brill are in jail now. Wait a minute. Mott, Louis Mott. He was a bookie for the Brill mob, but they made him the goat in a big operation. He's the only one serving time. 
Springer. I make it seem like I'm the one with the influence. I want him to be more scared of me than he is of Brill. Louis will be all yours. Send him to my hotel. Through the behind-the-scenes efforts of the committee and police chief Bellman, Louis Mott was released from jail on a trumped-up parole. You're out of jail, Mott. What are you worried about? Mr. Flagg, I was paroled. I never even applied for no parole. I know how things are with you and Brill, and I need good men who hate Tony, so you're out. Please, Mr. Flagg. That's a lot about me hating Brill. Look, Mott, I'll tell you once, and that's all. I'm moving in on the RNL. Brill is finished. Finished? Yeah. You want a good spot in my setup? You tell me what I want to know. Such as? Who's Brill's check man? Oh, please, Mr. Flagg, I ain't no pigeon. I... Get out. In an hour, you'll be back in jail. Please, Mr. Flagg, please. You mustn't say such things. Not even joking. Who is he? Delacourt. The kid. Ted Delacourt's his name. He's a killer, Mr. Flagg. But you mustn't well, Nobody's ever... gonna hurt any of my boys, Louis. Tell me, Delacourt do that job at the airport? I don't know, but, but it figures. He does all of Bill's dirty work. But if he ever found out that I was the one, he'd, he'd step on me like I was a mosquito, maybe. You're through being a mosquito. Here, get yourself some clothes, expensive ones. I want my boys to look good. Gitas, this reminds me of the days get when I... Get yourself a room downstairs. I'll call you when I need you. Thanks, Mr. Flagg. I'll be waiting. Eight five seven eight nine one, please. Hello, Walton. Flag. Okay, I'm ready to let Brill know I'm in Miami. Have Ernst your own story and hint that I'm in back of that Cuban gang. Yeah, I want to be tied up with those two who were killed at the airport. He will try to kill you too. Uh uh. He'll have to ask questions first. Tell the stands I want five or six Cuban detectives, good ones who won't be afraid to work with me. Bellman could give you the man. No. The RNL probably has a tab on every man on the Miami force. Besides, I want real Cubans. Brill must think that they're part of my mob. Yeah. Now, look, Brill has a man by the name of Delacourt. Delacourt. Tell Chief Bellman I want a 24-hour tail on him. Let me know the minute he tries to leave town. He's the check man. I'm telling you, Mr. Flagg, that story in a paper this morning is going to get us both knocked off. And two such knocked off characters you'll never see. You still live in, Louis. I know, but they're liable to scratch me in the next race. You know what happened to me today? I runs into Cully O'Brien. He looks me right square in a kiss and he says to me, he says, Louis, he says, you're out of jail. Then he looks at my brand new clothes and he says, say, he says, it seems that a guy can make more dough in jail than he can on the outside. Then kidding like, he says to me, he says, who does a guy have to know to get into this jail? I'm telling you, Mr. Flagg, I don't like it. Cully works for Brill. He's liable to tell Tony that I'm out. Yeah. Good night, Louis. Oh, but Mr. Flagg, I don't want to stay in a room alone. Talk to yourself, Louis. You can't get into trouble that way. Yeah, I know, but... Stay right there, Mr. Flagg. No matter how much you take off, my gun will keep you covered nicely. It's supposed to be funny? It should be. I've been sitting here for three hours trying to think of something clever to say. Now you said it, what do you want? My name is Holly Abbott. I saw that story in the paper this morning. You wouldn't need that gun to make me talk to you. I'll keep it just the same. Until I find out whether that story is true or not. You don't recognize my name? Should I? You should. Gomez and Canita were friends of mine in Havana. You know lots of names, don't you, kid? Maybe you're taking a big chance spilling them to me. Only if you're a phony. That's one of the chances I'll have to take. Ow! 
But that's an actor. You're not so tough. It's an act. I could cry like this whenever I want to. What do you want here? I was with Gomez and Kanita on the plane the night they were killed at the airport. I figured I was next. I thought if you were really connected with them, you'd help me. What you doing, Havana? I danced at the El Colombo. What's the rest of it? I went to Cuba looking for my sister. You gotta do better than that. Oh, please, believe me. I've been trying to find her for eight months. She, she just disappeared. And then I found out she was in Havana. So you latched down to a couple of hoods like Gomez and Canita, huh? I found out they'd known my sister, but that she'd left for a better job here. When Gomez said he had to go to Miami, he said I could come along. He'd help me locate her. He, he'd been trying to date me for a long time. He, he thought this was it. And all he got was a slug in the head. You don't believe any of it, do you? No, I don't. If Tony Brew wants to find out what I'm doing here, tell him to ask me himself. I didn't lie to you. I'm not very good at shooting people, so it took all the courage I had to come up here tonight. I won't bother you again. You ever do any gambling? I know my way around a crap table. We're going to the Biscayne Club. That's Tony Brill's main gambling house. I might be recognized. Yeah. I make a pass at you. I know you told me the truth. You don't want to go? Clear out. I'll go. Where are you staying? The Riviera Plaza. All right, we'll stop by there. You can change that dress for something that'll make them notice you. Let's go. Tony said you were here. This is Cora Gibson. She's going to work for you. Give her a rundown. Who sent you? Mr. Loker. He's a very good friend of mine. Okay, said... sit, kid. Lots of girls work for me, honey. You'll just be one of them. And don't think you'll get any special treatment because of Loka. Oh, I won't, Miss Abbott. You have the looks, but you have to be smart, too. I graduated from high school. That's not what I mean, honey. You have to be smart about men. Now, we'll give you leads on all the rich ones you can handle. Your job is to steer them to the Biscayne Club for their gambling. You'll get 1% of whatever the sucker loses. Do I make myself clear? Yes, I think so. Well, that's all. I'll call you when I have your first date ready. Loka's waiting for you at the casino. I'm happy to have met you. It's all right, kid. It's mutual. I'm blow. Can't Johnny dig them up any younger? This one is practically middle-aged. <laughs> you know, the young ones bring in the biggest suckers. Yeah. Wonder what kind of a family a child like that comes from. What's the difference? You've got them all stopped. You like them older, like me. Had Teddy. Not all. Just special ones. I'm only special to Tony. You forgetting that? You know how Tony thinks of me. Like a son. We share things. Maybe you share them in college, kid. But not in this lake. You saying that for my benefit or yours? Man killer and lady killer. Not kid. Don't need to hear you if you wanted to yell. You're not going to grow up at my expense, kid. Someday you may be tough boy. Oh, not too old. See me then. You won't be too old. The ultra-smart Biscayne Club, with its illegal backroom gambling, was a spot where rich vacationers could gather. Each winter season, the club showed a profit of well over $3,500,000, because the crooked tables and dealers could control losses. Hey, kid. Tony. Robert and I were watching you when you walked into the casino. Just from the way you walked. I bet him a dollar that Gwen didn't argue too much about taking on Loka's girl. He didn't take much of a chance for a dollar, Tony. 
He's scared to bet me more than a dollar. Why shouldn't I be? You always win. He wins again. The Gibson kid's going to work. Yeah, you see that? <laughs> ah, this kid knows how to handle women better than I do. With me, Gwen would be for a week that the girl was too young. But it's as I say. If they're big enough to wear a fur coat for some rich sucker, they're old enough. Catch me on the other side. Robert. Yes, Tom. Be a good fellow. Take a look. See how things are going. Right, Tom. Ah, uh, you walked through that casino like you were a king or something. College did you good, Teddy. You know you're better than they are down there. Don't you know you're better? Hmm? Well, nobody's better than Tony Brill, even if they think they are. A little higher up there. Higher. Ah! Every night, new fools come in. Always new faces. There's no end to them. There's always been gambling, Tony, since the world began. It's a good business. It'll never end. I hope not. Sure. Why work for money when people want to give it to you? Tony. Hmm? Tony, it's a girl who's on the plane with the Cubans. Hmm. Well, let me see. At Jimmy's table, the dark haired one, the yellow dress. Yeah. Uh, more important, the guy she's with is Mickey Flagg. Flagg? The one who was in the paper this morning? Yeah. That guy's not very smart coming here if he's fronting for that Cuban mob. The guy is very smart. Why do you think he comes here, huh? With that day. To worry us, Teddy, to show he's not afraid. Is that supposed to bother us? Well, we find out, huh? Tell him I want to have a drink with him up here. Teddy, see that the boys take that girl to my place. I'll be there later. Cookie, give me my clothes, then blow. I'm gonna have company. Flag. Regards for you from Mr. Brill. He wants to know if you'll have a drink with him in his office. Sure. Be like old times. Here's these, kid. I'll be back in a little while. <laughs> Mickey Flag. My old friend, Mickey Flag, from Chicago. Tony, you haven't aged a day. Why, you shouldn't try to bluff your old friend, Mickey. Take a look. <laughs> All gray. Uh, nothing stands still. Business goes forward. People go backward. Uh, don't tell me. I remember. Whiskey and plain water. Unless maybe you like some of those Cuban rum drinks now. Whiskey. <laughs> you know, only today I was thinking about you. I see something about you in the paper. Yeah, I saw that too. I said to myself right away, ah, that's baloney. Mickey Flagg wouldn't let himself get mixed up with those Cuban small fry. If he wanted to get back in the business, he'd come to Tony. I've never been out of it. No? Well, uh, how come I never hear about you? Maybe people hear too much about you. Well, why not? <laughs> I'm big business. I'm like maybe the president of a big corporation. Yeah. I pay my taxes. The sunlight is on me. Even when those Washington committees want to look me over. I'm in the sunlight. Might be a good time to quit, then. Quit? Me? Why? Why? Tony, I haven't wasted 12 years. The Cuban syndicate is going to put the RNL Corporation out of business. Huh? You uh, shouldn't try to bluff your old friend, Mickey. It's not a bluff, Tony. It's a warning from an old friend. We're moving into Miami. We've got the influence. Don't try to stop us. We got two of your boys already. So you two up on me. You think those two big bolita bushes can shove Tony Brill around? Come here. Take a look. I'm always in front. Always. 
disappointed in you. I thought you were over the way you did things in Chicago. I'm putting on a show for you. It wouldn't be polite for you not to watch. <laughs> Get away from that. Get around the front of the desk. The kid will get you first. He doesn't miss. Flag. You're okay, kid. I like you. You got guts and you're ready to stand up for Tony. I just didn't want you to think you're as tough as Tony and his mob think you are. We can play any way you want, but we're moving in and we're big. Don't get in our way. No, I know I'm gonna kill you sometime. Your face is pretty. You could get to look like it was caught in a meat grinder. All right, Tony. Next time, come around to my place for a drink. Nice going, Lieutenant. Our car will be right behind you, Senor Frank. Now, do you believe what I told you? I know this much. You're in this thing up to your ears. I'm getting you an apartment adjoining mine. I might have guessed that. You weren't so coy with Gomez. I told you why. Your reason hasn't changed, has it? You move tonight. It's the only way I can think to keep you from getting killed. What is this, a wake? Take a look. Where did you get this? The boys in the parking lot took it out of a girl's purse tonight. This girl was with the Cuban guys on the plane. What did you do with that? Never mind. Who is she? I sent this to my sister a couple of years ago, Tony. And tonight, she was with the guy I was telling you about, Mickey Flagg. She hasn't done anything to you, Tony. I just got a report that you checked in with Flag at the Saint Souci Hotel, adjoining suites. Flag says he's going to put the RNL out of business. You know, we don't like that kind of talk, honey. It could be that she's not my sister. Her name is Holly Abbott. Now, because she's your sister, we'd be nice for a little bit. You go talk to her. We want to know what Flag is going to do and how he expects to do it. She don't tell you. We sweat it out of her anyhow, sister or no sister. You're a good girl, Gwen. You understand such things, hmm? I understand, Tony. We're all going to be at my place tonight. You come there and tell us what your little sister has to say. Gwen, Holly. Gwen! Oh, Gwen! Oh, I've been looking so long. So is a sister on a square. <laughs> come in, come in. Something up? 
girl just went in. I could hear it was her sister. Mm. All right. Uh, you're going to be on duty much longer? Two hours. My relief will come then. Sergeant Carrillo. Thanks, Martinez. For nada, sir. And all they knew in Havana when I got there was that you got a better job in Miami. So here I am. Oh, Gwen. It's wonderful to find you again. Yes, Holly. Say, uh, what's with this next-door neighbor, this flag character? I didn't think you were the type. <laughs> it's not what you think. Not at all. I came to him because I thought he could help me find you. How did you know about him? Look, Holly, I know a lot of things. Flag's an atom bomb in this town, and he's going to blow up in your face. Gwen. They're going to kill him, and they'll get you, too, if you keep hanging around him. Who are they? I've almost been killed twice already. Tonight and at the airport. I'll give you all the protection you need. But just tell me, what's Flag's pitch? Exactly what does he expect to do in Miami? I don't know a thing. Except that he has connections in Havana. Well, you were there. You should have known. He... This new job you got. You're with Tony Brill. Look, kid, don't go rocking the boat. Aren't you? Look at me. I'm rolling in dough. I'm lousy with it. Come live with me and I'll put you next to all the rich ones. Maybe you can even marry one. You are in with Brill. You're in with him so deep you'd sell me out to save your own skin. I'm trying to save yours, you idiot. I'll save it my own way. Don't give me that holier-than-thou stuff, Holly. You could hoof. All I could do was shake on top and wiggle on the bottom in crummy burlesque joints. See the kind of clothes I wear now? And you gonna tell me I was wrong? No, Gwen. I was. I shouldn't have tried to find you. Says he wasn't worth it after all. You're Mick Flagg. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Flagg. And since you're coming here as Tony's answer to what I told him tonight, you can go back and tell him the Biscayne Club will be closed down by the weekend unless he stays out of my way. Are you out of your mind? Just tell him, that's all. Holly. Goodbye, Gwen. Could have one of the rich ones. It was hard and cruel as she is, aren't you? Big sister just told you there's no Santa Claus and you're all beat up about it. Relax. Things will look a lot worse tomorrow. For a dame like you, they always do. Get out. Go ahead and get so at me. Better than feeling sorry for yourself. Before he left the hotel, Mick Flagg called an emergency meeting with the committee at Earnshaw's home. Then he gave instructions to the Cuban officer, Lieutenant Martinez, to maintain strict guard over the girl while he was gone. I said the Biscayne Club would be shut down, and it must be. I don't care what connections Brill has. I can raid him and close him up, but it's up to you men to keep him closed. When does it happen? Keep your vice going on 24-hour call, I'll let you know. Gentlemen, if I'm right in what I'm doing, you'll have Brill and the r &L right where you want them in front of a grand jury. Get a doctor up here, quick. Lieutenant Martinez, with a skull fracture, was the more seriously injured of the two. Holly Abbott suffered a concussion. 
but was able to talk later in her room at the Jackson Memorial Hospital. Doctor says you're going to be all right. What about Lieutenant Martinez? He tried to help me. He'll live. Can you talk a little? Who did it? I never saw them before. They tried to ask me some questions about you. Well, I told them I didn't know anything. They thought I was lying. They beat me. I can hang an assault and battery on them, but it wouldn't mean a thing. No, that's not the answer. What questions do they ask you? So many. What was in back of you? How many men did you already have in Miami? Mick. My head hurts. Stays that right tonight. I can have a squad in their club in half an hour. Don't pull any punches. My pleasure. That night, just before closing, the Miami police hit the Biscayne Club and pulled no punches. Flag. You wouldn't listen to me, Tony. Instead, you had to take it out on a girl who wasn't bothering you. Now I'm going to chase you out of Miami. The Biscayne Club is being smashed while I'm talking to you. Flag. Look, nobody pushes me around. Flag. <clears throat> Get me in my office. This is Police Chief Bellman. Anything I can do for you? Yeah, what do you want? It's me, Teddy. Tony, the club. Yeah, I know, I know. Flag just called me. And it was Flag. He said he'd do it, and he did. Hey. You take the checks out, out of the safe before those cops broke into my office? Yeah. OK. Tomorrow, take them out of town and cash them. All right, Tony. Now, get on the phone. I have to have a talk with all the boys right away. Where's my pants? You think I'm a fool? Of course, they can't prove any connection between the club and the r &L. Nothing can be traced to me or the RNL. How do you think I stay out of jail all these years? Hmm? Just asking, Tony. Everybody makes mistakes. That might have been one of them. And you, punk, would know when Tony Brill makes mistakes. I talked to Gibbons this morning in Washington. He's going to call me back. Gibbons is a good attorney, Tony. But maybe there are some things he can't fix. I pay him 200000 a year to keep me out of trouble. He's done all right. He'll call in a couple of minutes. Tomorrow, the club will be open again. We'll see. And you, Teddy? You waiting to see, too, like these other knuckleheads? You've always been right, Tony. I don't know why you shouldn't be now. Uh -huh. You see? Brains. And guts. Not like... Gibbons? Yeah, Tony Brill. Well, what about it? When are you going to get these lunatics off my neck so we can open? Mess. What kind of mess? Listen, Paul. I don't pay you 200 grand a year to give me alibis. Bad news? The heat's on up there in Washington, and he says the whole business started down here in Florida. Flag was able to do all that? 
It's not healthy, Tony. Not when he can put the squeeze on that big. Listen, you annoy me. So now you all think poor Tony, huh? He don't know what to do with trouble when it comes. Maybe Tony's getting too old, huh? You punks. I do plenty of checking on Mr. Mickey Flagg these last couple of days, and you know what I find? He's a sucker for a belly punch. You know what else? I'm gonna give it to him. You know where? A nice little town where to grow lots of oranges. Let me in, Mr. Flagg. I tell you, I'm so nervous, I'm shaking. This is a day I'm not to get, and it shouldn't happen to a quarter horse. I haven't got much time, Louie. Listen, Mr. Flagg, I'm walking down the street like a good law-abiding citizen just reading my racing sheet. All of a sudden, two cops drive up in a squad car, and the next thing you know, I'm getting a free ride down to headquarters, and bam, right up to the chief's office. Bellman takes a look at me, and he sniffs, like maybe I wasn't using the right kind of soap or something. And he says to me, now, look, Louie, I want nothing from you, but you tell that chief boss of yours, Flagg, that if he's not down here within 20 minutes, I'm going to take it out of your hide. Mr. Flagg, I haven't got much hide, so I'm telling you. Bellman's getting tough since he closed up the Biscayne Club last night. Okay, Louie, you better stay in your room. Don't worry, I'm through walking the streets. Here, Flag. I couldn't take a chance in going up to your place or using the phones. Half the hotel switchboard girls are on Brill's payroll. Now he's got the whole town turned upside down trying to pick up pieces of information. Now he's scared, Bellman. That's good. Well, I had to get you fast. Why? One of my men reported that Delacorte's leaving with the syndicate checks this afternoon. That's what I've been waiting for. His car's at the Norton Garage off Lincoln Road. Norton Garage off Lincoln Road. Well, watch yourself. Yeah. I'll see you. You like practical jokes, Flag. Uh, lots of laughs when you get to know me. The lights changed. Bear down on it. All right, so we're playing games. What do you want? I'm waiting a long time to talk to you alone, Teddy. Yeah? Yeah. I'm home and with the club's checks. Keep moving. Your tails are in that sedan in back of you. Tails? <laughs> there isn't anybody tailing me. You got a lot to learn, Teddy. You don't think Tony'd send you out with all his negotiable checks without putting a tail on you? What do you think you're kidding, Flag? I'm a big man with Tony. Nobody's big with Tony. Take a look. Never seen those guys before in my life. Yeah, they've seen you. That's what counts with your boss. Get out on Highway 27. I want to get those eggheads out in the open.
just want to see somebody? Okay, buddy. So far, you're giving the party. It won't be for long. My friend and I want to be alone. Any objections, boys? He don't go in no place without us. So Tony doesn't put tails on you, eh, kid? I was hoping he'd do that. That's what some of you guys did to Holly Abbott. Look, Mac, we didn't hurt a bad. The dame just wouldn't spill. Why, you... <laughs> Teddy, now we can talk. Let's head back to town. I heard you were smart, Teddy. Just how smart? Nothing I do gives me bad dreams. Smart enough. Those checks you're carrying, how much they're worth? About 300,000. Why? How'd you like to keep 100 grand of it? What? 100,000 in your pocket. The rest you use to start a Bolita game covering the state. You handle Bolita right, I'll put you in charge of everything in Florida. You'll be top boy, Teddy. Brill will be out, you'll be in. Just how much of this am I supposed to swallow? You better take a full dose of it, kid, if you want to stay alive. Remember, I could have killed you once before. I went to a lot of trouble to recommend you to the Cuban boys. They know you held a gun at the airport. They wanted you knocked out, but I told them you could be valuable to us. The more valuable you are, the longer you're going to be around. But I know you can deliver all you say. You knew it last night when the cops closed up the Biscayne Club for me. Tony wouldn't sit still for that. Get to me, have me killed. No. You're gonna kill him first. Kill him? You're crazy. We trust you, kid. You could walk right up to him. Tony always said you could have his spot when he was through. This way, you won't have to wait so long. Just give me a lot of breaks, Flag. I thought you never had bad dreams. I need gas. You're stalling. I have to have time to think. All right, just long enough to get gas. Yes, sir? No, no, that's all. This is the last thing I'll say, kid. You're smarter than Brill. You can have anything you want, or anyone. You're not giving me much choice. I'm glad you realized it, Teddy. If you can't beat him, you join him. The boys in Cuba would be glad to know what side you're on now. Said he was gonna slug you. I didn't know it'd be this way. Where will they take him? Could be any one of a dozen places. I don't know, I swear. Cash and those checks can wait. First, you're gonna get Tony. Now, 185-8913. papers about your kid. I'm sorry, I mean it. It's uh, too bad. Real bad. What do you want for him? I want you should go home, Mickey. Or to Cuba, maybe, and uh, take your gang with you. And I want my club open right away. You can have the club. I'll talk to Cuba, tell him they have to lay off here. Sure. You tell him good, Mickey. And uh, don't talk too long. Because sometimes I lose patience, even with my best friends. Notify your dealers. The club will open tomorrow night. I'll fix it. I'm glad we understand each other, Mickey. And Mickey, no tricks, please. Because if you do, well, what will happen? This will be too cruel. Deal them up. As soon as Flagg returned to town, he called an immediate session of the committee, for the plan he had devised necessitated using many of the facilities of the police department. At the request of the police, the local Miami television station, WTVJ, worked through the remainder of the night with the department's electronics experts. 
Since Flagg said he would turn the Biscayne Club over to Tony Brill the next night, television cameras had to be installed within eight hours behind air conditioning vents in Brill's office. These cameras were to televise on a closed channel directly to police headquarters. And as Mick Flagg had promised, the next night, the Biscayne Club reopened on schedule. <laughs> you know, just remember, always there is an ace. You just have to know how to shuffle the deck to get it, huh, Tony? Flagg thinks because he closes the club, he just walks into Miami and takes over everything. <laughs> we show him he's wrong. You boys are happy again and believe in your old friend, Tony, huh? <laughs> yeah, the club opened again tonight, Tony. But you can't hold this kid forever. I give him until tomorrow to make a deal. He doesn't want his nice kid to die, so he makes the deal. I tell him he can come and pick up the boy himself. Nobody with him, no cops, no tricks. He'll come. But he'll never go back. We maybe fix Mickey Flagg so his kid is an orphan. No? You think he'll just walk into it? He's got to walk. <laughs> and now we go to the club and enjoy ourselves. Everything set? Cameras are working fine. Good. Was Holly able to get in touch with her sister? Yeah, Gwen's on her way to the hospital now. I'll have to hurry. What about Delacord? He went for what I told him. But the gun I gave him has no serial number, no record in the police files. He'll use it. Ten of the best detectives from upstate are in the club now playing the games. Two squads are moving in from outside. Well, I guess that's all then. The others are here? They're all here. Hey, what if Gwen Abbott doesn't tip where the boy is? I'll call you from the hospital. You said you had a lot to talk over with me, Ollie. I hope it means you've come to your senses. Is that all you have to say after what Brill's men did to me? You walked into it yourself, I warned you. I took a chance coming here, and if all you wanted was to show me your bruises, I'm leaving. When did it happen? When did you get like that? So long, Holly. Wait a minute. I didn't ask you to come here to talk about me. It's Mick Flagg's boy. Where is he? Who says I know anything about it? Mick knows. He's coming here to see you. Go ahead and tell him where the boy is. Get this through your head, kid. I'm nothing but a wheel in the r &L, And wheels don't have a brain and they don't have a heart. So you can stop trying. Nothing. Right, Do it the only way you know. <laughs> oh, Mick, please. You're a sister. I'll give you a break. I'll give you a little break, Gwen. Tomorrow there won't be any more RNL. Before the night is over, Brill and his mob will be in jail where I put him. The RNL is going to go up in front of a grand jury. Maybe you'd like that jury to know you stopped my boy from being killed. Maybe you'd like me to think a little more kindly of a dame who owns a couple of hundred other dames. I said own them. Pal, you're blowing a fuse. When I have to be, I'm deaf, dumb, and blind. <laughs> you jerk! Get her out of no, here! No, stop, jerk! Get me police headquarters. Mick. I'll talk to you later, kid. Yeah, Chief Bellman. Bellman speaking. Bellman, this is Flagg. Anything happened at the club yet? No, nothing. All right, when it does, I want you to let Brill get away. What? Do you know what you're saying, Flagg? Look, I've stuck my chin out as far as it goes for you guys. Now it's your chance. Gwen Abbott clammed up about the boy. Okay. Brill said he'd kill the kid if he had to, and he'll do it. I want you to let Brill get away, so he'll lead me to the boy. After that, I'll deliver him just the way I said I would. But first, I want this one break. All right, Mick. But if you let Brill get away from you tonight, the building's gonna cave in, and all of us. Yeah, sure. 
Look, they got a couple of fast cars and a motor launch out there at the club. Cover all angles. I'm going out there now. And, Chief, thanks. If I don't get out of this, you'll be on your own. Good luck, baby. Explain the setup. This will keep you briefed on what's happening. It's on a closed channel now. Okay, Lieutenant, thanks. Look at that. It's just like nothing happened. Nothing. See those tables? The suckers are standing there three deep. Yeah? The less chance they got to win, the more they come. You know what I think? They don't like to win. <laughs> it's warm in here. Hot, hot, hot. Maybe the customers just came for the air conditioning. Well, whatever they came for, get down there and make sure that everybody's happy. Sure, Tony. We want happy losers. you left with the checks. <laughs> what are you trying to do, scare me for Halloween? Huh? I didn't go. Something happened. No, it's either you die or I do. Die? What kind of talk is that? Kid jokes. Put the gun away. It's a new bandwagon now, Tony. And I'm on it. What bandwagon? Look, can't you gone off your nut or something? Oh, oh. Leave the buzzer alone. Flag's in the driver's seat. He's asked me to go along for the ride as top man. Top man, Tony, you get that? I'm gonna be the big boy in the state. No more two-bit trigger jobs like knocking off those Cuban hoods just because you ordered me to. Now I'll be giving the orders. All right, all right. I promise you, never do you have to knock off anybody else for me again. Teddy, please, in heaven's name, put the gun away. Flag's just hot air. Hot air, I tell you. What do you want? Name it. Name it. Name anything. You can't give me a thing, Tony. I'm going to kill you because I have to. But why? Why? Look at me, Teddy. Look at me good. I never hurt you. Always I pat you on the back. So you want a piece of the club. You got it. It's mine. I give it to you. You want to cut it at bookies? You get it. All over the country. Teddy, Teddy, you're not listening to you're me. You're not big, Tony. You're not big at all. You're just like any other punk that's going to be killed. The slot machines. I cut you in. A big cut. Big cut. You want a percentage of the model agencies? Just ask me. Ask me. I own everything. Tony Brill is the r &L, And he makes you now a full partner. Now, now. I give it to you on paper. Teddy! <laughs> <laughs> Blanks! Blanks! Flag gave it to me. We've been tricked! <laughs> Cops. Tony, what are we gonna do? What do we do? You do what you know how to do. You come with me and kill Flag's kid. Sure, Tony. Sure. Come on.
You hear something? How's that feel like? Yeah. Maybe they're following us. Get into the island waterways. We could be trapped in there. Maybe, maybe not. holding the boy? No, he wouldn't take that kind of a chance. They can outmaneuver us in these waterways, Mr. Flagg. Yeah? Well, they didn't come in here for no reason. Say, Chief Bellman told me Brill has a yacht. Hey, Tom, Monterey Island. Soon we finish our business with Mr. Mickey Flagg's son. Then we go to South America. Tony, I'm sorry about what happened. You're not sore? No, I'm not sore. I think maybe I'm a little disappointed because it turned out to be a pump like everybody else. I'll get to my yacht quick, please. Clock turned back for Mick Flagg and his son. The boy was happy that his father was now a hero to the world. There was, however, one difference. Holly Abbott had come to visit Mick and Gil. She never left. And it was here on the Indiana farm that these three found peace together as a family. 